Hi, everyone. Um, we are so glad to welcome you to the third webinar, uh, which results from a, a, a joint effort between Enlightened Rise and Arcos Alliance Open Science Ambassador. Um, I'm Mikel Aguiar. I'm a researcher at University of Minho, and I'm also part of the Arcos Alliance as an Open Science Ambassador. So uh, this these webinars take place approximately uh, every two months. You can already see the next one that will be happening on the 10th of June. Uh, and will be about the Agape, uh, a community dedicated to promoting open science among students and early career researchers. So you can find all of this information in the archives of the previous webinars at the link maybe we can share the link for the for the pad so everyone uh, can see. Uh, so uh, myself as a researcher in, in the field of linguistics, I've had the opportunity to work on the development of software resources and digital resources. And along the way, I've also find myself uh, pondering these questions that are related to the today's topic, like how can I share uh, these resources that we are developing in line with open science? Uh, what do those uh, software licenses mean? So maybe you've also pondered these questions and that's why we set up the Mentimeter maybe here. I don't know if all of you have answered, but could I share the the results? Or what do you think, Inga? Yeah, why not? Yeah, and, okay. yeah, yeah. Thank for the first questions. Uh, <laughs> let us see. Okay, so here are the the pads where you can see the the other uh, webinars. Okay, so for the results, we have some answers. So. The first question was, what's your main motivation for attending today's webinar? So we have here researchers, of course, you are interested in the topic, you want to learn more about licenses, uh, the opportunities, the pitfalls. Um, we have here, uh, I'm a user of free software and open source, a user of Linux, okay. Um, you try to use open source with your students. So that's great. Let's see, how familiar are you with the concept of open software licenses? So we have one person that's very familiar, but most of all uh, of us are somehow familiar, or maybe not familiar at all. <clears throat> and let's see, have you used software with an open license yet? So yes, and maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, that's probably the case for most of us that we are actually using uh, open license softwares and we don't know it. Um, okay, should we move to the presentation? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, let, let me... Okay, let me just um, allow me to introduce the, uh, today's webinar speaker, uh, Pablo Garcia. Pablo Garcia holds the position of Professor of Computer Science at the University of Granada, where he also serves as the current director of the Free uh, Software Office under the Vice Rectorate of Digital Transformation. He has a really strong research background. Pablo has participated in 19 research projects, has authored over 100 scientific papers. His areas of expertise include service-oriented computing, evolutionary computing, computational intelligence in video games, and distributed algorithms, free software, and open science. He is also, uh, like myself, uh, a member of the Arcos Alliance Open Science Ambassadors. So I'm uh, giving the, the stage to you, Pablo. Let me just stop sharing. Okay. 
So everybody can see my screen? Yes. Perfect. So uh, thank you for your presentation. It's a pleasure to be here with uh, you all. Uh, this presentation entitled Open Source Software and Open Licenses, a Practical Approach. Uh, I thought to change the, the name to license or how I learned to stop worrying and love the code, you know, like the Stanley Kubrick uh, movie. Well, before starting, I would like to, well, uh, you already presented me, but I always love to, to put this slide in all my presentations. Well, uh, besides the stuff uh, you said about me, well, I use Twitter. At, uh, my handle is at Fergunet, but I also use Mastodon. That this is a, a Fediverse uh, social network. It means it's based in in free and libre, uh, free libre, open source software, and it's not uh, belonging to one company that can control the, the city. Every every everybody can open uh, an instance of Mastodon and start communicating. As you said, I use, I'm the, the head of the office for uh, free software at the University of Granada, and our mission is to provide a consultancy and uh, teaching and other uh, relate, uh, open source and free software related stuff to the academic community of the university. We also, for example, organize a campus uh, for children uh, from 7 to 14 years to teach them uh, computational uh, thinking, robotics and that using uh, free software. And also we organized the technological campus for girls in, uh, in July to make the to reduce the, the digital uh, the, the gender gap in, in STEM uh, uh, courses. Uh, besides all the computer science thing, I also like the photography, the cine, cinema, and urban sketching. That means uh, drawing in the, in the street. Okay, what are, uh, am I going to, to talk in this uh, presentation? Well, uh, the, the, the talk about licenses, I'm going to talk about licenses, obviously. But the first uh, question we have to, to, to make is uh, how, how to choose a license? Which one is better suited for my needs? One, but when I choose that license, how to apply, how to use it? Should I write something? Should I sign something? And uh, what, what should I do? Where, where, to, where to share, where, where to re release my, my, my data, where to release my software, where to release my images? Are the license the same for Im images or software? Or are they different? Uh, how, 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 how they work? But also uh, an important question I always receive in my office is how to combine licenses. I, I have this license and this part has another license. Can I combine both to create a new project? Are they compatible? We'll talk about that. And uh, probably we are, you are hearing me saying sometimes open source and sometimes free software are the same. Well, there is a concept called uh, floss. Floss doesn't mean flossing your teeth with the thread, you know, but also it's an acronym for free, libre, open source software. You, 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 you realize the L is libre in Spanish. Libre means free, but free as in freedom. So it's a, because when you, you hear free software, you, you think it's software that is free, that you, have to, that you, you don't have to pay for the, for the software because it's free. But it's not free as a beer. It's free as a bird. It's the, 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 and they, they added the, the L, the Libre, uh, to, to clarify that. So, but are different? Uh, well, we will see in this presentation. Uh, when you use one or another, are different things. They, they collaborate. One is more a philosophical, ethical approach, while the other is a, a, a more practical. Okay, probably you know a lot about uh, of uh, about uh, of uh, free, libre, open source software. Do you know you you mentioned it before Linux, for example? One of the questions uh, mentioned Linux, for example. Which uh, free software do you know? You want to put in the chat. Usually, I make this presentation in a classroom full of people, so usually people answer. But I know that in a in a webinar it's more complicated. So oh, there is uh, one person in the chat. GPL, no, no, I, I mean software, no, non licenses. LibreOffice, for example. I mean, no, when I hear the name exactly, probably you are using a lot of uh, uh, free software right now and you don't realize. Octave, Inkscape, for example, yeah, yeah, very good. Mozilla, exactly, exactly. Zoom, I, I don't, I won't say Zoom is free software. I, I don't know, I don't know, I, I, I should check it, but I'm not sure. But I won't say. Maybe I think Zoom is uh, is proprietary software. 
Okay, Ubuntu, for example, too. Yeah, there, you know that you know a lot of uh, a lot of uh, examples. Great, great. Okay, so for example, Linux. Ubuntu is a distribution of Linux. Linux is an operating system completely free. It's you know that it's usually it's used in a lot of uh, in a lot of uh, oh, sorry in a lot of uh, servers right now. Right now, Linux is the operating system for uh, almost all the servers in the world. When you are entering a web page. There is a chance that uh, an eighty an eighty percent of chance that it's being run in a Linux server using a program, a uh, web uh, uh, um, uh, um, a web server called Apache or Nginx that they are so free software. So probably mostly Apache and Nginx they they share the eighty percent of uh, web servers in the world. So. There is a, a, a very high chance you are using free software without knowing. Every time you enter in a web page, you are using free software. Okay, Android, you know Android in your phones. The core of Android is based on Linux, that is also free. The Mozilla uh, is another example of browser that you are uh, using. MySQL or MariaDB are databases. The GIMP is a, it's like a Photoshop, but free. Moodle, you, your university use Moodle for the virtual campus. You are using a, a free software uh, a framework. LibreOffice, you also mentioned it. Or for example, Blender. Blender is a 3D creation um, engine that is very used in the video game industry or even in the special effects uh, industry in, in cinema. But there are also free Libre open source software in science. If you are uh, used to machine learning, probably you use Weka or maybe TensorFlow or PyTorch. Mostly of the all the people in that uh, research in artificial intelligence are using Python, that is based in the in open source software, or using R. There is a lot of libraries for distributed computing. Octave, uh, Octave, as you, uh, you also mentioned in the in the chat. I mean, there is a lot of uh, of free software uh, using in in science, but uh, why should use or even develop uh, free software in, in academia? Well, our, our uh, objective in academia is to share. Our mission with the society is to share to share our knowledge. We, we our, uh, our job here is to create uh, to to enlighten the society. In fact, university means universality, and the science means to illuminate. So or we are it's very related to to our to our to our jobs. Okay, we 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 need a, we this is our, our ethical responsibility as scientists to to do that. Using uh, free software, we can gain more independence. If you, we are using, for example, uh, in the future, maybe the company that uh, has uh, is uh, is uh, developing Zoom goes to bankruptcy. We won't uh, have Zoom anymore. But if the people that uh, if the if the company that develops Moodle goes to bankruptcy, we still have the code to continue working on it. We, we, we can contribute to Moodle. We can work on Moodle, even if the company that develops stops working on it. So we, 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 we will have the, the medium to, to, to continue working on it. Uh, it also implies uh, other, other advantages like learning. If we have access to the source code, me as a computer scientist or computer developer, we can see how other people have programmed this uh, this software, and we can learn by by seeing the code. It also allows some saving. Sometimes we we can uh, use uh, community versions like the Moodle. I can download Moodle for free and set up in my computer uh, in the server in my university and start using Moodle without uh, paying a company. But uh, as I said before, free software, free as a beer, as a as a bird, not as a beer, uh, we can also pay the Moodle company to help us. So the Moodle company is still uh, earning money. And because uh, it's, uh, they're using open formats, they're based on standards. For example, do you know that uh, the Microsoft Word documents, they are not following a standard. They call them open, they, they call them open XML format is the name on the paper, but they have several parts in every, in every Word document that they are kept secret, secret. They are mm, encrypted, and we don't know what is going on in that uh, document. So this is related with security. If we have access to the code, we can see what's going on on the on our systems, on our software. 
Uh, for example, a couple of weeks ago, there was a huge mess because some somebody tried to put in a in a in a very important program to communicate computers between them. They tried to put a vulnerability on purpose to be to spy every everyone that was using this this software. But because the source was open it, another researcher realized, hey, there is a a vulnerability here. And they could they, they could revert to to the safer version. Okay, and uh, what is the relation with open science? This is uh, the open science cosmos that we published in the Arcus Alliance open science position paper. Uh, open science is uh, usually when I say open science, people only think in open open access. That means putting your papers uh, open to the to the public. But open science is more than that. It deals with the governance of the universities, uh, sharing the data, the infrastructures, the methods that includes the source, uh, the the software code of the of the algorithms we develop. We also the open science also deals with uh, citizen science, allowing people to work in our in our research, also open education, sharing training materials, even uh, open the evaluation. For example, uh, putting the the reviews you receive in a, in a paper, open it, you can see how the paper changes a long time and you, you can agree or disagree with the reviews. Or even the evaluation, when you, you apply for a position in a university, uh, the evaluation of the people should be open it to avoid some favors, you know, so like uh, I'm choosing you because you are my cousin or something like that. I want to say that open science is a very big uh, cosmos, uh, cosmos and, it, and it's not only related with uh, publications but uh, but a lot of uh, of uh, elements that interact to it okay so I always tell my students uh, we, we heard that uh, releasing the academia is the ethical thing you know we, we want to share and that but I always tell my students uh, they are going to be developers why why to to release their their work well it generates a good development practice there are uh, a lot of libraries to allow to you to share the code to, to make beautiful code that works in different environments, because if your code is going to be used by a lot of people, you have to program better than if you are going to program for your computer. It, it builds community too. For example, uh, people in my university usually gather together to work in an in, in a open source project. They make friends, they, they later, after programming, they go to for a pizza or something like that. It means that people usually gather and share uh, this passion uh, and tries to, to 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 reach more people. It also generates uh, example as we are said before. We are university. Our mission is that. But uh, the most useful thing at, at, at I told my student is it serves as a, as a portfolio. You release or your programs that you are doing with your friends to learn or your assignments. Companies will see your portfolio. If you are an artist, you want to share your photos to, 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 to get more recognition. So companies are starting to look for your GitHub account to see your software. So, so people uh, will contact you even before you apply for a position in a, in, a, in a company, they will contact you if they see your code. I always tell my colleagues that works in a, in, in companies, they usually tell me that they don't look at the grades, but they look at outside things. For oh, this uh, student uh, makes a program with his friends outside the, the the assignments. So I see these people. This person is uh, has uh, is uh, likes challenge, and they they want to do some other stuff. Okay. But if we want to release, and this is the, the, the first question I got, it's how to release. What, what, the, what the concept of release is to put in your source code, your data, your whatever, uh, available for public. But how to do it? First of all, we have to choose <clears throat> an adequate license. There is a lot of licenses. I'm going to show you some of the licenses available. And we have to choose the most adequate to my needs. It depends. I want to, or people use it for free. I want a license. If you use it, you have to pay me. There's a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of, of uh, options I can, I can, I can, I can choose. But the thing is, uh, when you want to release, you you have you not you need to use a forge. A forge is a web page where uh, where you upload your source code 
and it's available to to everybody. The most famous one is GitHub.com. Almost all computer science people use GitHub.com to share their programs, the source, the data sets, because it's very easy to use and it becomes the, the Facebook of programmers. You can use your own fork. You don't want to put your code in GitHub because it's owned by Microsoft and it's using it to um, train the artificial intelligence models. You can create your own fork. You, um, there is, a, the, for example, different universities have their own fork. And you can set up in a server in university and um, release that. You can also be a, you need to know that there is a several pages like software heritage that are tracking all the uh, available forges in case one of these forges are closed because funding or something. So to keep uh, an archive of uh, existing software because in future it will be useful. And uh, I mentioned GitHub. Uh, GitHub is a web page, but the program to interact with GitHub is called Git. Git is a, is a software to manage the source code versions, and you can uh, use with or without GitHub. Uh, they are different. We say Git is the program that you use to keep track, and you can upload these tracks to, to the forge called GitHub. It's, they are different. Git is different than GitHub, OK? OK, but uh, should I care about licenses or not? Well, what are the licenses? Licenses, are, think of the license as, as licenses as a contract. Uh, you can create your own license. You can open our document license called Pablo license. This license allows you to use my code. You can write anything you want. You can set uh, deities, expiration, territories to use. You know, for example, the when you install a program, we install Windows or Office, you usually see a, a contract uh, please accept the license. Remember that when you're installing something and you always click yes, 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 next, next, next. Sometimes uh, these licenses, th there are no open licenses, are software licenses, no, they are not open because, for example, they, this license says that you cannot use this uh, software in Cuba, for example, or, or in North Korea. You, you, did you know that you cannot, you, you cannot use Windows in Cuba? If you go with your laptop to Cuba, you, you cannot use uh, Windows there because you accepted the licenses saying that you won't use uh, Windows in Cuba. But I don't know because they are Americans, they don't want to, to use there, I don't know. Uh, you know that when you install face, uh, Photoshop, the license says you can you if you said you are using this uh, software, you cannot uh, make a um, uh, you cannot demand Adobe because you are using this. So you have a problem with the with the with the software and it broke something or deletes your work or that. The license says if you are using this, you you cannot demand us. Okay, so there's no, that's how I see it. There are no open licenses because they have these the, uh, small uh, issues there. And uh, what about if you found something in the internet without licenses? If, for example, if, if I found a, a, an image on Google, oh, this is oh, it's, it's free. It's because it's in the internet without licenses, that means it's free. On the contrary, any document, any data, any photo, any source code without license, by default, all rights are reserved even if you don't know the people who created it. That, that, that's the law. It's the, the law in all countries. You cannot use a photo in the internet. For example, look at this photo. Uh, it's a uh, Hawaii. You see, you see McLove in, in uh, driver's licenses. It's from a movie. Uh, when I found this photo, they had a license by Bobo Usala on Flickr, CC by NC. So they, I found this photo in a Flickr account of a, of a of a guy called Bobo Usala, and they, uh, he allowed me to use this image. I don't know if this image was used by him or not. Probably not, because I saw this image in a, in a movie. But if you have any, any problem, the, the, here, Bobo Usala is the one that gave me permission. OK? Uh, it's important to mention also that uh, the, the licenses usually protect the specific code. So you cannot patent. Uh, an idea. For example, I'm going to make an algorithm to te to create uh, images and that. This is my code. You cannot use my code. Okay, I cannot use my your code. If you don't give me permission. But the idea of using this algorithm is not uh, is not uh, restricted. 
it's like a, a recipe. Uh, this is my my text, writing a recipe, how to uh, make a tortilla of patatas, a potato, to, a potato omelette in Spanish. Uh, this is my recipe. You cannot copy my text, but you can create your own recipe of a Spanish omelette, changing the text, okay? There are a lot of uh, licenses available to the public. Probably you mentioned someone, the GPL is one of the most famous licenses uh, up there, uh, but there are a lot, there are hundreds. This is a, a, a small example of licenses I usually, uh, I know and uh, I usually use. For example, the GPL, the Apache, the AGPL, Creative Commons, Eclipse Foundation, and I found the last one, do you see this one like W? Uh, I, I told you that you can write your own license. So some, some person create this W license uh, called, I have to ask uh, permission to say, do, the, it, the license is do whatever the F, you know the, what the F means, do whatever the F you want with uh, this. It's the name of the license. It, it, the text is put in the next to the do whatever the F you want uh, license. Oh, yeah, and some people here are using it. It's the you you ask a lawyer, you will say, okay, you have permission to do whatever the f you want. So there there are some examples. Okay, how to choose uh, one of them? How, how which which one should I choose? Well, it depends on the community. For if you are a developer, uh, you are working with Apache products. Well, they use they make you to use the Apache uh, Apache license. If you are uh, developing with JavaScript or creating npm packages. They make you to use the MIT or ISC license. If you are working with Rust to create crates in Rust, the packages in Rust, you should use MIT and a page. If you are using WordPress, you should use GNU, GPL. Okay, so it depends on the community you are developing for. But also depends on the type to share. If you are going to share software, it's different that you are going to use to share data. Because if uh, when you share the document, you the the document you see the, the image, you see the the data set. But if you share software, this software is going to be executed. So it's not only going to be seen, but it's going to be executed. That's the reason uh, they have to be different uh, license for one type or the other. If you are going to share uh, photos and uh, data, media, sounds, video, text. Uh, you should use Creative Commons, the most extended license. Probably you heard about it. Wikipedia use Creative Commons licenses to share the, all the information and the photos. Uh, it depends. On, you can choose even more uh, particular sub-licenses. For example, if I want, uh, in my case, I, I have all my photos in Flickr with a license uh, CC by SA, share alike. That means that if you want to use one of my photos, uh, you can use my photo, you put in your book, in a t-shirt, in a poster, whatever, but the condition is uh, you have to cite me by, you, you see the by here, you have to cite me, you put a text, photo by Pablo Garcia, and share alike means that the derived, uh, the derived word created, it needs to have the same license. For example, if you create a a photo and use a, well, a, a sky from my photo, and you put in your photo my sky, your photo should be also by SA. It's like a virus, you know. There are another combinations, like for example, NCs mean non-commercial. You can use my photo, whatever you want, but you don't have, you, you won't, you can't have, uh, you, you don't, you, you, you won't get uh, economical compensation. You, you can't sell my photo if you are the non-commercial. Or non ND means non-derivative. If you use my photo, you, can, you cannot modify my photo. You can use my photo, put in a t-shirt, in a poster, in a book, but you cannot modify my, my photo. You cannot change color or add or, uh, other elements. Okay, this is the most used for data media. But it cannot be used for software. This is important because software is going to be executed and the images are not going to be executed. So there is a, a very dis dis distinction in, in that. Okay, how to choose one of them? Well, you can use this uh, page, choose, choose a beta creative commons.org. They will ask you some questions and they will uh, generate the license for you. Okay, I want this and this and this. Okay, we recommend you to use this creative commons. In this case, I executed the test and uh, other can remix, adapt, or build upon my work, and they gave, they gave me this. 
attribution non-commercial for that zero international perfect so people that use my you can see credit must be given to you the creator only non-commercial use of your work is permitted so use this word this page to generate the license you uh, when you share this photo you, you need to put the license next to the photo in the web page in the book near the photo so if you don't put the license the photo has copyright but if you put this license it affects the the photo Documentation. You know that uh, when you are developing a software, you can, you need to uh, put uh, put uh, uh, usually a good uh, good thing to do is to document the, the software, explaining what the software does. But uh, you can use uh, in this case because you are mixing text and code, you can use software license or a license for media like Creative Commons. If you are using code inside the documentation in the text this uh, you, you should specific the, the specific software license if you're creating fonts fonts like i mean like the letters like this well uh, uh, like arial times new roman and that uh, you should use this open font license that is a license specific for fonts so you see it depends on the on the on the word you are going to share you, you should choose one the license or the other and hardware, if people here are working in creating, in creating circuits and PCBs and uh, or electronic devices, you can use specific hardware license. People, for example, uh, you you maybe you know about Arduino, the Arduino, um, the Arduino PCBs. There are some chips, no, not chips, but small uh, computers that you can program and connect elements and that to learn the robotics and that is usually suited for people that, that is learning to, to program, uh, they have a, an open hardware license and you can create, you can buy the, the electronic devices with a soldier, you can create your own Arduino board following the steps given by the company Arduino because they're using a, an open hardware license. Okay, so uh, before uh, this presentation I asked you about uh, the differences between open source or free software. I usually say free software, sometimes I say open source. What, what are the difference? Well, let, let's say that uh, one of them, the, the first one that appeared was the Free Software Foundation that created the, the term free software. It's a, a foundation that it's created, it starts uh, from the 70s and 80s when people started programming, creating, the, let's say, the, the first hackers, the first developers in the in universities, they started to share the programs. The idea of the, the free software is a most uh, an ethical and philosophical way to approach the, the openness. You have freedom, the, the, the user, the, the free is not the, means that the source is free, but the user is free. It's free to run the program, to study the program, to redistribute the, the copies of the program, or, or you modify the program and redistribute again. But uh, the thing is, access to the source code is a precondition for this. So. They, they, are, they want to, to be free, but making you to free the modifications. So that's the, for everybody being free, everybody should free the, the software. While uh, uh, there are other way to, to see this, they say that is called the open source initiative. It's a uh, very similar to the, to the free software, but uh, they have to give you free distribution, a source code available, integrity of the author source code, no discrimination, but uh, these uh, licenses the, between the open source initiative cannot require that only other software that is distributed with the open source must also be open source. So if I get one software with an open source initiative license, I can close the software and make it proprietary, for example. So I want to, I don't know, I want to earn more money, I modify this uh, program, I change the, everything, and I sell this program, but I don't have to release the source code. While in the Free Software Foundation, they command you to release the, the source. When I say release, I don't mean put publicly on the internet. If my, my company is uh, creating software for the specific uh, entities, for example, and they pay me to do a software, I can program the software and gave the software to my client that is the company. I don't mean that I have to put uh, uh, for free on the internet, but uh, I have to, to give it to the, to the company. Okay, while the open source initiative, if you want, you want to release the, so the, the code, 
but if you if you don't want you don't need to to do it so let's see this is a more a practical uh, usually companies prefer this uh, this uh, approach because they want at the end of the day they want to earn money so this is more flexible more, more flexible for the for the companies that the reason this uh, initiative is uh, followed by a lot of companies like Apple, Microsoft, you know, the, the, the big ones, the big ones. So uh, I'm going to, to, to show you some uh, licenses from the open source initiative, the OSI, OC, and the FSF, the Free Software Foundation. The, the most uh, well known is the GPL. It's created by the Free Software Foundation and allow you commercial use. That means you can sell your, uh, you can sell your software and earn money. You can distribute, you can modify. If you create a, a patent from this uh, software, the contributors of the source code have right to the, to, the, to the patent. You can use it in private use. You can download the program, modify, and if you're using in your company, you don't have to release the, the code. The thing is, if you are going to sell or give the program, you have to uh, reveal the code to your client. You have to put a copyright and a license notice in your code and the problem here, like some companies don't like, if always you have to keep the same license. If you are using this uh, software that uses GPL and you add your own software, the new software has uh, also to be GPL, like a virus. So the idea is if you use this and it grows, it always to need to be GPL. Okay, but there is a lot of company uh, program that use the GPL. For example, Ansible is a program very used in distributed systems to to distributely modify servers and, and that. Uh, Bash, that is the command line client in the Linux. Jimp, that is this like Photoshop-like program, very potent. Uh, a lot of people use it for for free. Uh, they are using the GPL. But the thing is, uh, the way we use uh, software are changing. Now we are using software that is not being executed in our computer, but in another person's computer in the cloud, for example. Of, so if we want to, to, to allow people to use our software in our computer remotely, we can use the Afero uh, GPL, this is the a, a GPL. So if you are, want to, to use my software in a distributed way, you have to use this uh, this license. But uh, there is a, a, a middle term, middle ground here that is called the LGPL. That it's a, the L means lesser, but also should, people use associated with a library. I mean that uh, you can use my software, but you can call my software. If you don't modify my, so my software, the software that use my software can be Close it if you want, but you cannot modify my software. You can only use, you can call my software from your software, but if you don't modify my software, you can use your software in a, for example, in a video console or a television or whatever. So there is a lot of people that use the LGPL like a middle ground. So you are free to do, to use my software wherever you want, in Windows even, and uh, Microsoft uses, for example, a lot of LGPL software in the Xbox, for example, and the uh, video games use this uh, license a lot because they don't, and the difference like, like GPL that you have to keep the same license. If you don't modify the specific code, you can use the, the code as a library or something like that. So, so a lot of people uh, use uh, this. For example, in, um, on the contrary, Apache belongs to, uh, do, to the OSI, Open Source Initiative, and it's like very similar, you see? Commercial use, distribution, modification, contributors have the right to the patent, private, but it's a permissive license. No need to reveal the code. So if you use my code created in Apache and you modify my code, you don't need to, to reveal the, your changes. You want to sell or whatever. You have to keep a license and the copyright li uh, notice saying there is code here from Pablo Garcia, but uh, you, you don't have to document the, the you don't have to share the, the, the source code. You have to document the changes. It means we have here in my, let's say a video game, my video game, Super Mario World 4, uh, is use part of code from Pablo Garcia for jumping. 
and we, we modified the jumping algorithm. But the source code of Super Mario World 4 doesn't need to be to be shared. For example, uh, Swift uh, Swift is a programming languages language created by Apple. You know, Apple is so is so close it, but the programming language called Swift is uh, used the Apache license. Why? Because that way a lot of people will use Swift and create programs for Swift, and uh, it will be adopted by the community if they are open. But in any case, the creators of the, the user of the program want to close the generated program, they, they can because they don't need to reveal the, the code. And finally, the MIT license is uh, the most permissive uh, or, or, or all. You, you here are very similar, but the difference is you don't need to reveal the code as in Apache, but the contributors do not have right to patent uh, either. But there is a lot of uh, program use, uh, using MIT. MIT is like do the do whatever the f you want license, but in a serious uh, way, I mean, no, with without this as logo. It's a very it's a, it's like a, do whatever you want with my license. It, a lot of uh, companies use it because they they allow more flexibility. Okay, but like like before, there is a lot of uh, of uh, a lot of uh, licenses available. How to choose an open source uh, license? You can use this web page, choosealicense.org, and they will give you some questions, and they will uh, recommend you a license depending of whatever you you want. I recommend this this, this web page. And well, okay, once uh, the the license is chosen, how to apply? Well, if you are going to share. A document, an image in Zenodo, for example, to share your papers, uh, documents, data sets. When you upload the, the paper or the PDF or the photo, you select here in the in, in the web page the license you want to use. For example, Creative Commons Attribution for 4.0. So when it's published in Zenodo, as a, a, a big repository that gives you a DOA and a lot of facilities to, to share your, your research data or papers. Uh, they will put the paper here and here the license. So people accessing to your paper will see the license. So that's the license applied. If you are going to apply software licenses, sharing your code, the, depending on the license, you have to put a file next to your source code called license or copying with the text of the license. Some of license like the Apache, I told you that uh, you have to document the changes. So you have to put the changes.txt file next to the source code. Uh, other ones, they need to put uh, some text in every file of your source code on the upper and on the top bottom, top part of the of the file. This file uh, is using a GPL license, for example. So it's a uh, it's uh, just to putting uh, a, do a document next to your code. Uh, a lot of uh, programs, to, uh, IDIs, programs to to program, they allow you to configure automatically. To automatically put all this information when you are programming, so you don't have to 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 bother. Uh, for example, if you uh, easy way to do it, if you are going to share your project in GitHub, you can create a project in GitHub. GitHub, you remember, is a repository for uh, for a software uh, source. You can select here from a menu the license of your project, and when you upload the code, it automatically has the the file of license next to your code. You can see Apache, GNU, MIT, BS2, Boost, Creative Commons. You know, there is a lot of uh, license available and they will create the file for you. And uh, you can uh, even combine license. If, uh, if you're a programmer, you usually need to get a library from here, a software from here and combine them to generate this. It's uh, If you know you're, you're a programmer, you know how difficult this can be. But the problem is, what is this half MIT and what is this half, half uh, GPL? How can I combine the license of my projects? Can be MIT or GPL? Well, it depends. Uh, let, let's say let uh, let we say that uh, depending on the combinations, usually the more uh, protective is the one that wins. If I get a, a, a MIT library and GPL library, if I combine both libraries into a larger one probably I will have to use GPL because it's the most protective, the most restrictive, like the virus, I told you. There are uh, different uh, software you can use 
to to check this like the european uh, union uh, compatibility checker that you have to check some marks and they will give you the 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 the, the, the output the how, how should be your the license of your software or even you can use this uh, matrix is uh, an excel you can download and depending uh, if the uh, of the if the libraries are being used dynamically or statically it's a computer science thing it depends also the the output so if we, we use share the you have to compile libraries between them let's say it's a static they, they behave different if they are dynamic so this uh, software can help you to choose the, the right license depending on your needs there are also also other tools like license finder Fosology, codana some of them can be integrated if with your programming environment to automatically give you some uh, solutions uh, and that so i mean there is a, a plethora of uh, software to use when you want to to use a, a license and just to to finish i, I will I, I would love to put this uh, quote this information is believed to be correct but it's not legal advice for formal legal advice please consult an attorney because you know the laws in spain are different than the laws in germany or in the united states and we, as uh, computer persons, we are not very used to the uh, low languages. And uh, please take everything I say to you today with a grain of salt, because I'm not an attorney. We, we, I'm recommending some uh, very extended licenses because they have been tested. Uh, people know about them. So instead you're creating your own license, usually it's better to use one of the existing ones. Or in case you are very worried, you, you can uh, hire a lawyer to help you to develop this license and to uh, understand what they can and why they cannot do. Okay, this is the web pages I recommend you choose a license. Uh, the the, the gnu.org web page, there is a fact, very fact, uh, with a lot of information uh, about questions about licenses. I recommend you also the Arcus Open Exposition paper, that's the, the, the link there. And if you want to join the Arcus Open Science Ambassador Networks, uh, you know, just contact with uh, with me or other members of the Arcus or Light Alliance, so so we can grow this uh, this good uh, initiative. Um, as I you said, some images uh, using Creative Commons. This presentation is Creative Commons by non-commercial share alike because I use photos that people wanted to uh, use this uh, kind of uh, license. So that's the reason this li these uh, uh, slides also are uh, is, uh, using the, the, the same license. So thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoy the, the webinar. Here are my contact data in case you want to, to discuss uh, further stuff. And it's been a pleasure to collaborate <laughs> with the Arcus and Light uh, alliances and giving this uh, talk to you. So I'm open to any question you want to, to make. Thank you.